Good morning, St. Barnabas faithful. Uh, welcome to our Sunday celebration and service. Uh, this is our seventh Sunday apart, and uh, we're moving towards coming back together, but this is what we're doing today, and I hope you enjoy the service. Let us begin. Alleluia. Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, whom truly to know is everlasting life, grant us so perfectly to know your Son, Jesus Christ, to be the way, the truth, and the life, that we may steadfastly follow his steps in the way that leads to eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. We'll now have our readings. Our first reading is from the Acts of the Apostles. Filled with the Holy Spirit, Stephen gazed into heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing at the right hand of God. Look, he said, I see the heavens opened and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. But they covered their ears, and with a loud shout all rushed together against him. Then they dragged him out of the city and began to stone him. And the witnesses laid their coats at the feet of a young man named Saul. While they were stoning Stephen, he prayed, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. Then he knelt down and cried out in a loud voice, Lord, do not hold this sin against them. When he had said this, he died. The word of the Lord. Our psalm this morning is a portion of Psalm 31. In you, O Lord, have I taken refuge. Let me never be put to shame. Deliver me in your righteousness. Incline your ear to me. Make haste to deliver me. Be my strong rock castle to keep me safe for you are my crag and my stronghold for the sake of your name lead and guide me take me out of the net that they have secretly set for me for you are my tower of strength into your hands I commend my spirit for you have redeemed me O Lord O God of truth my times are in your hand rescue me from the hand of my enemies and from those who persecute me Make your face to shine upon your servant. In your loving kindness, save me. Our old, uh, New Testament reading is from the first letter of Peter. Like newborn infants long for the pure spiritual milk so that by it you may grow into salvation. If indeed you have tasted that the Lord is good, come to him, a living stone Though rejected by mortals, yet chosen and precious in God's sight, and like living stones, let yourselves be built into a spiritual house, to be a holy priesthood, to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For it stands in Scripture, See, I am laying in Zion a stone, a cornerstone, chosen and precious, and whoever believes in him will not be put to shame. To you then who believe, he is precious. But for those who do not believe, the stone that the builders rejected has become the very head of the corner and a stone that makes them stumble and a rock that makes them fall. They stumble because they disobey the word as they were destined to do. But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's own people, in order that you may proclaim the mighty acts of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Once you were not a people, but now you are God's people. Once you had not received mercy, 
but now you have received mercy. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Jesus told his disciples, do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house, there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and I will take you to myself, so that where I am, there you may be also. And you know the way to the place where I am going. And Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you know me, you will know my Father also. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father and we will be satisfied. Jesus said to him, have I been with you all this time, Philip, and you still do not know me? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? The words that I say to you, I do not speak on my own, but the Father who dwells in me does his works. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father is in me. But if you do not, then believe me because of the works themselves. Very truly, I tell you, the one who believes in me will also do the works that I do, and in fact will do greater works than these, because I am going to the Father. I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If in my name you ask me for anything, I will do it. The Gospel of the Lord. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house, there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again, and I will take you to myself, so that where I am, there you may also be. In this in one long speech, Jesus with great tenderness is trying his best to prepare his disciples for the time when he will no longer be with them in the flesh. He's trying to get across that their relationship is changing but not ending. This passage is often used um, at funeral services um, with the purpose of comforting those who, who are mourning. And the truth is, is that on any given Sunday, any given day for that matter, amidst this or any congregation, there are always going to be hearts that are troubled by loss and the new realities that loss brings. The COVID calamity has brought loss and new realities at a scale we never could have imagined. And moments such as we are experiencing now are some of the most pivotal moments of our lives. Something has happened. Some permanent disruption of our reality has occurred. It could be the co 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 um, coronavirus. It could be you know a death. It could be an illness. It could be the loss of a career. It could be the loss of a marriage. But these threshold moments are not just moments we associate with pain and loss. It could be graduating. Um, it could be having a baby. It could be a new job. It's any time you find yourself betwixt and between your old comfort zone and the advent of the new. It's at these moments we ask, now what, God? What, what am I supposed to do? Uh, what am I going to do? Is, there's a proper name for this kind of phenomenon we're talking about, and it's called liminal space. 
Uh, liminal literally means threshold. You realize you're in a liminal space when something is left behind or lost, but you haven't entered into something new yet. Jesus is trying to walk his friends through the liminal space created by his coming departure. Leave it to good old Thomas, though, to start asking questions. Always Thomas. Um, Thomas, who always needs things as concrete as possible. He just comes flat out and says to Jesus, um, just give me the coordinates. I need a map. I need a map and I need coordinates. I can plug them into my GPS. I need, that's what I need. Um, no, what he actually says is, how can we know where you are going? How can we know the way? That is the question that prompts Jesus to answer, I am the way and the truth and the life. So the question is, how can we know the way? And the answer is, I am the way, the truth and the life. It's more than a little sad, I think, when these words, which are easily some of Jesus's most quoted words, that they have become the classic clobber text. Clobber text, what is that you ask? A cl clobber texts are scripture passages that are wielded as weapons in theological discussions. Clobber texts are used to say who's in, who's out, who's saved, who's not. Here's an example. The Bible says Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through him. Bam. Discussion closed. Case over. That's a clobber text. It's just troubling to see this beautiful, comforting, inclusive text used to say something like, you're in or you're out. God knows the world does not need more clobbering. <laughs> the world needs more loving. So Thomas's question is, how can we know where you are going? How can we know the way? And Jesus answers Thomas with great tenderness. He's saying these words with tenderness. Remember, he's trying to comfort him. He's not talking about, you know, one religion being better or anything like that. He's addressing Thomas's question directly. These are Jesus' words to Thomas. Thomas, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Jesus is saying that his way is the way that leads towards God. Jesus is saying to Thomas and to us that in all that he does, in all that he teaches, the truth about God is made known. And finally, Jesus tells Thomas and us that if we want to know what life lived in God looks like, if we want to live that kind of life, then Jesus' life is to be our life now. Jesus is offering comfort to those who stand on the threshold. Offering comfort to those who are saying, what's next, Lord? Now, it must be said that Jesus' answer does, doesn't eliminate the liminal space. There is still mystery. Any religion that doesn't have mystery, look out. Uh, there will always and always should be mystery one last thing as to Thomas question of where I'm not sure that in his answer Jesus is necessarily speaking about geography or about a particular destination if the resurrection and Jesus post resurrection appearances teach us anything it is that Jesus has no confines in the divine domain Geographic locations are irrelevant. Jesus appears and he disappears. He is in Jerusalem, Emmaus, Galilee, seemingly all at once. 
What if this is not necessarily about going anywhere, about finding the right place, but about discovering that we are already at home with God? That's what Jesus is, is saying to them. They're saying, we want to know where God is. And he's saying, you've been with God. Jesus is saying, the dwelling places have been created. They are in me. I am the map. I am the place. I am the sign. I am all around you now. God is all around you now. I am in you now. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house, there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and I will take you to myself so that where I am, there you may be also. Amen. The prayers of the people. With all our heart and with all our mind, let us pray to the Lord, saying, Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the world, for the welfare of the Holy Church of God, for the unity of all peoples, let us pray to the Lord, Lord, have mercy. For our Bishop David and for all the clergy and people, let us pray, pray to the Lord, Lord, have mercy. For our president, for the leaders of the nations, and for all in authority, let us pray to the Lord, Lord, have mercy. For Fredericksburg, for every city and community, and for those who live in them, let us pray to the Lord, Lord, have mercy. For the good earth, which the God has given us, and for the wisdom and will to conserve it, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the aged and infirm, for the widowed and orphans, and for the sick and the suffering, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the poor and the oppressed, for the unemployed and the destitute, for prisoners and captives, and for all who remember and care for them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all who have died in the hope of the resurrection and for all the departed, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For deliverance from all disease, danger, violence, oppression, and degradation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. That we may end our lives in faith and hope without suffering and without reproach, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. In the communion of Barnabas and of all the saints, let us commend ourselves and one another and all our life to Christ our God. To thee, O Lord, our God. We will now, uh, I will now read the litany for thanksgiving. Let us give thanks to God our Father for all his gifts so freely bestowed upon us, for the beauty and wonder of your creation in earth and sky and sea. We thank you, Lord, for all that is gracious in the lives of men and women, revealing the image of Christ. We thank you, Lord, for our daily food and drink, our homes and families and our friends. We thank you, Lord, for minds to think hearts to love and hands to serve. We thank you, Lord, for health and strength to work and leisure to rest and play. We thank you, Lord, for the brave and courageous who are patient in suffering and faithful in adversity. We thank you, Lord, for all valiant seekers after truth, liberty, and justice. We thank you, Lord, for the communion of saints in all times and in all places, we thank you, Lord. Above all, we give you thanks for the great mercies and promises given to us in Christ Jesus, our Lord. 
To him be praise and glory with you, O Father, and the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. And why don't we follow that up uh, with the Lord's Prayer, um, all in one voice, uh, me here in the church and you uh, in your homes, and let us say uh, the words that our Father taught us together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. May you know peace this day in your home. And Lord, help us to be kind uh, to ourselves. Help us to be kind to those we love and help us to be kind to everyone uh, we meet for all of us are involved in our own great struggles. In the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Spirit. Amen.